They won't develop a masculine physique or learn combat skills. They just won't. I had this guy, he was an incel, sends me an email. I think he wanted to do a, uh, a sponsored request. So if you don't watch the Entrepreneurs in Cars channel, you should go subscribe to it. Uh, people can sponsor videos over there and ask me to respond to whatever it is that they're stuck on. Okay. And I usually end up reading, you know, whatever it is that they're stuck on. It takes 20, 25 minutes. I get feedback. Boom. I said to this guy, Instead of me reading what you're writing here, why don't you come on the show and let's go back and forth? Because this is going to take a little bit of time, right? Like when I do private consults, like I'm dealing with high net worth individuals. My rate is not cheap. It's expensive. You can book me online at richcooper.ca, you know, if you guys have the means. So I said to this guy, why don't you come on the show and let's have a conversation about what's not working for you and go back and forth and try to figure it out. So I had him on an Unplugged Alpha show. Many of you might have seen this episode. If not, you should go back. It was about two or three months ago. And... The guy's like, basically, I'm a really nice guy. He sounded like a nice guy. And women don't want anything to do with me. I just don't have any success, right, you know, with the gals. And it's like, you know, you ask him some questions. Well, what do you do for a living? Well, it doesn't really do much. He's not influential. He's not capt captivating. He doesn't have um, a good social network, doesn't have any skills. He's way underweight. I think he was... 130 pounds, five foot six or seven, six, you know, wasn't super tall, but way, way underweight, right? Like, like my chick's five foot eight, 130 pounds, you know, she's fit. She's got a little bit of muscle on her, but she's mostly, you know, like a fit chick sort of thing. And it's like, dude, you weigh less than a chick. Like, why don't you go to a gym? Well, you know, I, I don't know, like maybe I will sort of thing. Why aren't you at a dojo learning combat sports? Like learn how to throw hands and fight. Well, you know, like... You know, I was talking to this other kid a couple of weeks ago. He had me as an interview on his channel. Uh, his name's Tyson Hockley. Seems like um, a good up and comer. 16 years old, right? Finds me on Twitter, says, hey, man, young, young man, I want to have you on my podcast. Ask you some questions. Sure. No problem. Talk about a few uh, concepts and ideas. Get to combat sports. Yeah, my mom doesn't really want me to fight because, you know, she thinks I'm going to get hurt or I'm going to break my face. It's like, this is where we are right? Like, you know, helicopter parenting is like pussifying children to the point where they're not allowed to learn fundamental skills of life, like combat, like how to throw hands. What happens if the shit hits the fan? What are you going to fucking do? Right? What are you going to do? Nothing is what you're going to do. You're going to be one of those people that are like, well, I'm afraid of guns and I never want to want my kids to learn how to fight. So I don't want them to get injured or hurt their noses. So they have to stay inside and, you know, like in a bubble, the shit hits a fan. People that have the means that have the ability to wield violence will be going around taking shit from you is what's going to happen. Nobody likes a meek man. My advice is go anyway. Fuck what your parents think. Go learn how to fight. So back to the insult. Didn't want to lift weights, didn't want to go to the gym, didn't want to learn how to fight. It's like, bro, how am I supposed to fucking help you if you're not willing to help yourself? You won't even do the basics. 130 pounds. I would be embarrassed to be an adult male at 130 pounds, okay? Pocket Hercules, the guy that I've talked about before, buddy that I grew up with in my 20s and 30s, we used to live together. He was 5'5". Five five. He was about 165 pounds, okay? I don't give a fuck. 130 pounds at 5'6", five, 5'7", five, whatever it was, is embarrassing. I would be embarrassed to be that light, to walk around. I, I remember as a teen, 14, 15, 16, like when you go through the growth spurts and you're just shooting up like a freaking rocket and, uh, you know, sometimes you wake up and you're sore because your bones have grown overnight. Like that's, you know, that's what it's like. And like weighing in at 140 pounds or something like that, I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty decent size now. I'm six foot two, 215 pounds or so. But there was a time when I was like, you know, over six foot and I was light. I was, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. Like I used to, even in the summertime, I would wear big sweaters to try to like hide, you know, how thin I was. And I was doing push ups, and I was doing pull-ups and I was doing the curls and I was reading like, you know, I was, I was reading about how to build muscle. I didn't want to be skinny, you know? I, I saw icons like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Conan the Barbarian. I thought to myself, that's what I want to look like. But people don't do that today. Guys are just like, 
yeah, you know, why don't girls like me? It's like, bro, you're 130 pounds. Girls are bigger. Than, like the average chick in North America is probably 180 pounds. Hundreds. I think, let me just look it up real quick. I think the average weight of a Western woman, it's been published somewhere. What's the average weight of a Western? I think it's 160, 180 pounds. It's fucking ridiculous. Here it is. The average woman aged 20 years and above weigh 170.8 pounds. No wonder chicks aren't looking at you. They're like outweighing you by a huge margin because it's hard to lift weights because it's hard to get punched. Yeah, it's hard. Anything worthwhile in life is going to be hard. I used to have a part-time job when I was in high school, nursery. It was a garden center. It was a pretty cool place to work out, work at actually, because there was a lot of young, attractive women in cashiers and the, you know, like the garden center and the, the crafts, like there was a lot of chicks there. So it was a good place to be social. It was a good place, you know, to, to develop some strength and some skills because a lot of shit you had to pick up was heavy as, as hell. Like four, four cubic feet of peat moss, five foot park benches, all these things that we had to lug out from the back to customers' cars. And you're in the sun sweating a lot of the time, you know, in the summertime. It was actually a pretty decent job, you know, for a uh, teenager. Um, back to the part-time part. I never, my dad would never give me a ride to work. He'd be like, ride your bike, walk. I don't give a fuck. Take the bus. You know, you figure it out, right? I didn't have access to a car. My younger brothers got the car when they were teenagers. I didn't get shit. So I'd be sitting at the bus stop, you know, 15 years old, okay? And I'm looking at the cars going by. And my favorite car at the time uh, was an IROC convertible. It was a Chevy Camaro. They made them from 85 to 1990 was a body style that I liked, okay? It wasn't a powerful car. Five liter, two port injected engine, maybe 200, 220 horsepower car. But they look fucking cool. I remember sitting there, because you wouldn't see a lot of exotic cars back then. You wouldn't see Ferraris and Lambos and shit like that. This was the exotic car to a 15-year-old like me at the time. And I'm like... That seemed like so out of reach. They were probably 25, 30. You know, I, I would go home and I would look it up, right? Or I would walk into the dealer and be like, how much is this car, right? And it was like, you know, $25,000, $35,000, like somewhere in that range, you know, depending on how you loaded it. And it's like, that seems so out of reach when you're making $2.75 an hour, right? Like how the fuck do you turn $2.75 an hour to $25,000 to $35,000 so you can have the car you want? I figured it out. I figured it out because I bought the car like five, six years later, you know, when I was like 20, 21, I figured it out, right? Like this is what guys do. I've said this many, many times, you know, people ask me all the time, like what's the most important skill you got to have as an, as an entrepreneur? Yeah. The most important skill you got to have is problem solving skills, so, like solving problems that you're dealing with. And guys would rather be like, well, women are shit, so I'm not going to do anything. Uh, I'm going to just go to my room and stay there instead. Uh, fine. You know? Don't call into my shows and ask stupid fucking questions, though. All right, we covered masculine physique, combat sports, and my dudes that go to the gym, I I salute you. I see you guys, you know, working out, picking up heavy shit, putting down, working on your physique, eating the calories, you know, drinking the liquids, doing everything that you need to do to put on the size and the mass and create the optics of masculinity. It's not hard. <clears throat> it really isn't. It's not difficult. It's just putting in the reps and the time. Eating good food, moving more. There's a couple of guys that I follow on social media that uh, deal with uh, fitness and health. I don't need help with fitness and health, but I'm, but I'm interested in the engagement conversations they have. And I noticed there was a few guys dialoguing back and forth about this um, peptide, semiglutide, Ozempic or whatever the hell it's called. It's that new one. Um, I bought some stock in Eli Lilly months ago on the recommendation of a friend that deals in that space. And, you know, it's done really well. But it, it's that company that basically gives you that week, weekly injection. It's a, a pen. You don't even have to know how to fucking inject. It's so basic. A retarded monkey could do it where they could just stick it in and it's like, boom, oh, they got the injection, right? Like they've, like they've made it that simple. They don't even have to learn how to pull it out of a syringe and clean or backfill another syringe. They made it so simple. Retarded monk, uh, uh, okay, I got my shot, right? They, these people just want to keep eating shit, but take the shot 
so they can keep eating shit. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? These are the, like, this is what these guys in that space are dealing with. Like, that's what their customers are. They want to keep eating shit. Their pizzas, their hot dogs, their frozen foods, their microwave dinners, their McDonald's drive through bullshit. They want to keep eating that and then take a shot and not be fat. It's like, this is your competition. This is, this is the vast majority of males out there today are the people that you're generally competing with. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clips from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.